Up next, Sean Tracy is a guy who believes in honoring our veterans and also loves making museum quality models of military vehicles similar to this one. The result is a veterans model project. The Veterans Model Project was started five years ago and what I do is I find World War II veterans, any veteran will suffice or, or, or is eligible, but I focus on World War II veterans. I get a small history of their military service and my way of thanking them is by building a model of the plane they flew in, the ship they sailed on, the vehicle they drove, the equipment they used and I give it to them at no cost to them. It's, it's my thank you gift. I'm not sure what prompted me to, to begin doing this. Um, I've just always had a high respect for veterans and I just took two things that I love the most, veterans and building models, and put them together and came up with the project. I am a resident assistant, which is just a caregiver, at Independence Village in uh, Brighton. And believe it or not, the reason I got into that was because of the Veterans Model Project, dealing with so many people of older age, I just was compelled to serve them. And I put myself through school and next thing you know, I'm, I'm actually taking care of them. Once I find a veteran, um, for instance, say he flew in a B-17 Flying Fortress, I'll find out what position he flew in, whether he was the pilot, the bombardier, gunner. Talk to him about his plane, what the plane looked like, because there was different color schemes, nose art was different, where they flew out of was different, whether it was Europe or the Pacific Theater. Um, then I'll locate the model kit, purchase the model kit, and start building it. Um, and I try to detail the model so it's as close to a replica of the very same aircraft they flew in, right down to the tail number. And I could spend anywhere from 60 up to 300 hours to build one of these models. Giving them a model is more, in my view, it's more personalized by them actually having a replica of that subject, vehicle, aircraft, whatever it may be. To the veteran, it, it's, more, it's more appreciated because they're not reading something on a piece of paper. So they're actually holding a small scale replica of what they operated. And so it, it becomes more real to them they're all appreciative. I've never had a single veteran ever say, well, no, that's not right, or that doesn't look correct, or that's not the same color. Every one of them are appreciative. Um, I've had a couple cry, which it's kind of hard for me because it's not my intention to make anybody cry. I mean, they're crying out of, out of gratification and, and happiness and stuff, but it's still, it's, I don't want to make them cry. <laughs> but, but they're all very, very, very thankful about it. In mid-1941, nobody thought, well, they, there were suspicions that we'd be going to war. A lot of people denied the fact that it would ever happen. So when the war broke out and these individuals, these ordinary men that were thrust into extraordinary circumstances were called to service, they answered the call. Ted Diamond is a Korean War veteran and he was with the artillery in Korea and he operated 105 and 155 millimeter cannon. Um, he's getting a replica of the cannon that he operated as a loader and it's been built onto a base, what they call a diorama, so you can get a sense of how it was set up and, and used. That is for you. Oh, I do appreciate mm -hmm. it. See all the little detail, I got the shovel and the dirt. Bring back memories. That's kind of the, the whole idea. But this is to thank you for your service. Well, certainly appreciate it. Nick was in the Air Force for a year what? and a day exactly. And while he was tied to a desk, his favorite pastime was going outside and watching the P-51s do their thing in the air. And it's his favorite plane, so that's why he got it. Oh, I love it. Good. Absolutely. 
when I explain to them that in my eyes and a lot of other people's eyes that they're heroes, they just absolutely refuse to accept the fact that they're heroes. Um, the heroes to them are the ones that didn't come back um, or the ones that are permanently disabled. Those are the heroes in their eyes. In my eyes, if you served, if you wore the uniform, you're my hero. The World War II veterans freed a good part of the world from tyranny and were it not for the World War II veterans, not of just the United States, of all the Allied forces, who knows where we'd be right now. Veterans need to be thanked and they need to be appreciated for what they did. Many of them went in voluntarily, but others went in by a draft. Uh, they might not have wanted to go in, but their nation called and they served. They sacrificed years of their lives for pretty much the benefit of the world. My ultimate goal would be to build a model for every veteran that I come in contact with who wants a model. When I'm no longer asked for a model or I don't have any veterans to offer a model to, then I know the project is complete. If someone knows or has their own significant way of thanking a veteran, I strongly suggest you do that. If, if you see a veteran and he's wearing a, a hat or he has a World War II veteran's license plate, just go up to him, shake his hand, thank you for your service, and you'd be amazed what that does for, for the veteran. The 99th Fighter Squadron is one of the most celebrated squadrons of the Tuskegee Airmen. The Airmen's success during World War II, not losing a single bomber to enemy fire in 200 of the 205 combat missions, is a record unmatched by any other fighter group. 